Today we'll be practicing the process of multiplying mixed fractions. The first step in multiplying mixed fractions is to make both of the fractions improper. Two and two-fifths can be rewrote by taking the denominator or the number in the bottom times the whole number in front. So we're going to take 5 times 2, which is 10, and we're going to add to it the numerator, which is a 2, thus giving me 12. So my first fraction will equal 12 over whatever the denominator was to begin with, which was a 5. I'm going to repeat the process, but this time with the second fraction. I take the denominator times the whole number in front, 4 times 3, which is 12, and I add to it the numerator, 1. 12 plus 1 is 13, so my fraction will now be 13 over 4. If you know how to cross simplify at this point, you can do that, but we have not really covered that process. So we're just going to use the basic idea of multiplying across. So after I've made them improper, I'm going to multiply straight across. So I'm going to take 12 times 13. 2 times 3 is 6, carry my 1. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. I'm done with my 3, so I put a 0 in. 1 times 2 is 2, and 1 times 1 is 1, and we add down and we get 166. So, my new numerator is 166. My denominator is a little bit easier. 5 times 4, which is 20. Now, I'm not quite done yet because I need to write it as a mixed fraction. To do that, we would take the numerator at the top and put it inside your division problem or division house. Put the 20 on the outside, and now we multiply to figure out what goes into 166 evenly. Well, I know 2 times 8 is 16. So, I'm going to try 8. 20 times 8 is 160. So, I'm going to write 160. I'm going to subtract it from 166, leaving me a remainder of 6. So, now my fraction has become 8 and 6 twentieths. But 6 over 20 reduces because they're both divisible by 2. If you make a factor tree, they both have a 2 in common. So if I divide them by 2, or maybe you list out the prime factorization, which is 2 times 3 over 2 times 2 times 5, you will find that the 2's cancel, leaving me 8 and 3 tenths because 6 and 20 are both divisible by 2. So one more time, let me repeat the process. Step 1, we made them improper. Step 2, we multiplied across, which is the green step. Step 3, we divided to find out how many times 20 went into 166 leaving me 8 and 6 twentieths. And then step 4, we reduced it by either using prime factorization or just dividing the top and bottom by 2. The final answer to my math problem is 8 and 3 tenths. Let's try another one. 4 and a third times 2 and 5 sevenths. To start, we're going to take the same process we did last time and the same steps. We take our denominator times the number in front. So 3 times 4 is 12. 
plus 1 yields a 13. So it's 13 over whatever my denominator was to begin with, 3. Now I'm going to do the same process to the second one. 7 times 2, which is 14, plus 5, which is 19. So we have 19 sevenths. We multiply across thirteen times nineteen. Seven carrying my two. Eleven zero three one. Add down. We get two hundred and forty seven on top, which is called my numerator. Now I'm going to take 3 times 7, which is 21. Now this one's a little bit trickier than the last one to figure out multiplication. So we're going to divide. So we're going to take 247 divided by 21. So how many times does 21 go into 24, which is once? We write a 21 down and we subtract 37. How many times does 21 go into 37? It goes in once. So we got 21, we subtract, and we get 16 left over. So my answer is, with the remainder of 16, 11 and 16 twenty first. Now I need to do my factor tree or my prime factorization. Or some of you just think about it. How can I break down 16 and 21? Do they have anything in common? Well 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 if you make your factor tree. 21 is 3 times 7 if you notice, they don't have anything in common. So I can't reduce 16 over 21. So my answer is just 1 and 16 21st. Let's try one more. 2 and 5 6 times 8 and 4 fifths. Step 1 is to make the fractions improper. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 5 is 17, so we have 17 sixths. 5 times 8 is 40, plus 4 is 44. My denominator is 5. So now I multiply straight across. 44 times 17. I'm going to put the 44 on top because it's bigger this time. It's a little bit bigger. 4 times 7 is 28. 4 times 7 is 28 again, plus 2 more makes 30. The 7 cancels and we have a 0. 1 times 4 is 4. 1 times 4 is 4. And we add down 8, 4, and 7. So, my new fraction is 748 over whatever 6 times 5 is, which is 30. So now I've got to do a little bit of division. I'm going to take 748 and I'm going to divide it by 30. Now 30 doesn't go into 7, but we know 30 goes into 74 twice. Reason being is 2 times 30 is 60. We subtract down, we get 14, and then we carry down our next value, which is 8. Well, I know 3 times 3 is 9, which is, would be 90 in this case if we add a 0, which is not too bad, but we probably can get a little bit larger. Let's try 4. 30 times 4, well, 3 times 4 is 12. Add a zero, which would be 120. Let's try four. 
We put 120. We subtract down. We get 28, which is good, which is smaller than my 30. So my remainder is a 28 because I have no more digits to drop down. So right now what I have is 24 and 28 thirtieths. Now 28 and 30 are both divisible by 2, so we know that we could reduce it. So either you can divide by both by 2, or we can look at the prime factorization. 28, using a factor tree, is 2 times 2 times 7. 30 is 2 times 3 times 5. If you notice, they both have a 2 in common, which is why I said you could divide by 2 but they don't have any other factors in common. So my final answer this time is going to be 24. Since I have 2 times 7 on top, that's 14. Since I have 3 times 5 on the bottom, that's 15. 24 and 14 fifteenths. I hope this has been helpful. Let's try a few on our own now.